Friends, I recently finished reading this book, Breath, written by James Naster. And I must tell you, after reading the book, I realized right way of breathing is so very important to live a healthy lifestyle. And I'm going to imbibe some of those breathing patterns and practices into my life, one breath at a time. And I do hope after listening to this video, you'll be inspired enough to pick up this book and practice some of those breathing mechanics and inculcate them in your day-to-day -day life. What I'm going to do next is share with you some five or six lessons I've learned. Hopefully you like what you hear. The first and the foremost is we have to stop breathing from our mouth. All of those uh, patterns and diseases you, he you hear about, like for example, sleep apnea, uh, for instance, snoring at night, uh, for instance, the nasal infection, asthma, is a cause of how we are breathing in. When you breathe through your mouth, you are bypassing all of the filter mechanics that the body has developed using nose. Sure, the mouth is an emergency outlet for or inlet for you to take oxygen in, in case of emergency, for example, your nasal block, obviously you'll open your mouth and breathe. But by and large, we have made it a practice to open our mouth and breathe, which is causing many such diseases as well as uh, lifestyle changes that you're bringing to your life. So my advice to you is uh, shut that mouth up as much as you can, at least when you're breathing. Be conscious about it when you are sitting and opening that mouth, trying to try to stop opening that mouth while you're breathing. Especially you can practice when you're running. You'll realize that if you run or if you do any strenuous exercise or any strenuous activity, you'll realize that moment your body needs more oxygen, you open that mouth. Try to shut that mouth up and see the change that will bring to your body. Uh, people also say that, hey, you know, I can consciously try that when I'm awake, but what if when I'm sleeping? So there are uh, certain mechanics you can follow. For example, there's a 3M tape you can take and, uh, you know, tape your mouth before sleeping, which can help you to breathe through your nose, but try to see what you can do to breathe your nose and inculcate those healthy, breathing life, uh, changing activities into your body. The second thing I want to highlight is, it is very important that how many breaths you're taking in a minute. Uh, I, I, I know that I was surprised to learn that in, and I have an Apple watch, you can measure that. And I was breathing about 12 to 15 breaths a minute. And what the book said is that, you know, optimum level is five and a half. How can practice that is simple. You take five and a half so, you know, breaths inside first, like five seconds or five and a half seconds of you know, breathing inside and then five and a half seconds exhaling out. So by doing that, you know, you can control the number of breaths you want to have in a minute, which will truly help you to relax your organs, uh, which, by the way, because of your over breathing has been overworked over a period of long time. Understand that that when you breathe in, um, the oxygen that the lungs will have will be transferred to the organs, to the various body organs through the blood, which is the carrier is hemoglobin. And moment the oxygen is there for the organ, they will try to burn it and they have to work hard. They need oxygen, yes, but in optimum level. And by optimizing your breathing pattern, you can optimize how much of oxygen is reaching to your organs and you do not make them overwork and hence can live a very healthy lifestyle. I also want to highlight that the breathing patterns were discovered way, way back early in our culture. Uh, Mohan Jodro civilization, which was back, I believe, 1900 to 2600 BCE, which is close to about 6,000 or 7,000 years back. There are mention of breathing pranayas or yoga, which was at that point in time in the Indus Valley, which is now in India and Pakistan, that's that area. And they had signs of yogic poses and science of yogic breathing pattern back from that time. Um, Buddhism, if you see, which is an offshoot of Hinduism as well, has breathing pattern. Om in Hinduism is nothing but when you say Om, you're breathing in and breathing out again in the same rhythm of five and a half to six seconds. Similarly, Rosemary in Christianity, when you do that, it is nothing but controlling your breathing pattern. So people back in the day have realized how important breathing is and that has been inculcated in different cultures, Chinese, Buddhism, 
Judaism as well as Hinduism, you can see that in ubiquitous pattern uh, in form of text, textbook texture as well as in form of artwork on caves as well as on different leaflets. I also want to let you know that holding your breath is also very important. You must have heard about deep sea divers who can hold their uh, breath for more than 8 to 10 minutes. Um, I think it's an art which you need to develop over a period of time. Holding your breath gives you control over your body and it also allows your body to uh, react and do work in a particular manner. As we all know, there are sympathetic and is uh, a parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system is a relaxation, especially, for example, when you eat food, right? Uh, if you eat a lot of carb heavy food, what happens? Your body kind of signals you to sleep. The reason it is signaling, signaling you to sleep is because it wants to relax so you can digest the food uh, and signaling, signaling the stomach to digest the food and while you can relax, right? Similarly, your, your sympathetic nervous system are activated when the organs have to engage. You're running, right? Your lungs has to be engaged. Uh, your breathing pattern has to engage your legs, your tendons, your muscles has to engage. So it is hungry for action and that's when the sympathetic nervous system is engaged. If you realize, I mean, it is a research done by different medical scientists that most of the time cancer happens because blood is not flowing to certain organ and hence the cell, the stem cells behave in some erroneous way and causing cancer. The, the root cause is blood not flowing to those organs in a particular manner. And as I say, the sympathetic nervous system is not in your control. It is autonomous in nature and it can only trigger based upon the vagal nerve which is in our body. Well, in the recent past, scientists have tried to create um, an electrode which can be set inside the nervous system which can activate the vagal nervous system to activate the organs. But all of those you don't have to do if you can breathe properly. Unlike other belief, breathing is the only way by which you can actually activate your sympathetic nervous system and hence blood flows to your organs more actively, more consciously and can make your organs work in a manner that you want to in a more optimized way. And also as the blood is flowing, the organs will be more active and you can actually avoid disease states such as cancer to name a few. I also want to let you know that, <coughs> excuse me, olden days like yoga, which I mentioned about Buddhism, I mentioned about breathing was not used as a, as a medium to control disease or to get away from disease. Rather, breathing was a style or a way of living life. It is not to avoid disease, but to go from whatever base of your lifestyle you have to the next base. So it is all about how you can have the right form of breathing to go to a different level or different zone of um, your health, health and lifestyle, which can help you to live in difficult situation and make you healthy and have the longevity with a healthy lifestyle. There are examples of, uh, of yogic in Himalayas who can live in really extreme cold situation without any clothes in their body and all they are doing is controlling their breath known as Tumo by the way you can search about it uh, by which they can increase their body temperature just by breathing pattern it's like Tumo is nothing but breathing in a particular way by which you can activate your sympathetic nervous system and hence you can activate your organs to work and produce heat and they can live in those areas um, in a manner where we cannot even believe like in zero sub-zero temperature without any cloth or very scant kind of clothing on top of top of them one of the admirer of this book um, is known as Wim Hof Wim Hof in fact uh, has recommended this book as well and he himself was astonished by how these yogics were trying to live in such extreme condition without clothes on them so he actually he himself went to Himalayas he learned the art of Tumu and in fact he has done marathon in extreme condition both in um, ice like in um, you know icy condition where it is sub-zero without clothes in them he has done marathon and also in a desert condition where it is extreme heat 
how to cool your body and still do marathon. Uh, it is a science to learn about through breathing is all they have done. And if you can control your breathing, you can control the way your body behaves, the way your organ behaves and can, you can live in a very healthy life. I want to leave you with some very interesting fact about our mouth posture and how our face has been designed over a period of time. And uh, it was surprising for me to believe that chewing is so very important for your own health. And unfortunately, because of the kind of food we eat today, the food has become soft. So our chewing has reduced over a period of time. And in a matter of few hundred years, in fact, you don't have to go too long as well. Our chewing habits have completely changed, which has changed our mouth pattern, our bonal pattern on the facial part, which is also causing our breathing to change accordingly. Because since you're not chewing enough, we are not exercising our bones enough. Our bones are become, becoming either vestigial, our nasal bones, or they are becoming smaller in size making our nostrils smaller in size, hence causing our mouth to open for breathing. See, all of these are cyclic in nature and they're linked with each other. And chewing has become so, so very critical. In fact, um, if you go back in the old time, in fact, in my lifetime as well, when I was growing up, we were having raw foods, which we can you know chew, chew all the time, like sugar cane. I used to take it like raw, you know, you you eat the sugar cane using your mouth rather than having a glass of sugar cane juice or apple or mango or any kind of fruit and today you have alternatives like uh, fruit juices and you know purified form of food and whatnot and which is making a uh, chewing heavy to go away which is causing all of those concerns and in fact uh, in our healthy living style you have to bring chewing back as well consciously by eating more raw foods or if that is not feasible for you for whatever reason, uh, you can take chewing gums, right? And, uh, and chew them enough so that your teeth grind, which will help you open your um, you know, bone structure. You must have seen, and this is my last point, which I want to mention before I end the video. You must have seen that as we grow old, uh, our face, uh, facial you know, tissue shows that, right? Your face will have droops, you know, your, your tissues will drop and it is, kind of showing that you are growing old. What I've learned, which is, which I'm going to practice quite a lot now is, right by just inculcating few behavior of right breathing and chewing and all, you can actually grow your facial bone as well as the nasal bone back up. And as the bone, bone grows, your tissues will accommodate more strongly around it and you look much more young, uh, much more younger. So I hope for this reason, at least you will chew more and you know, not only live healthily or a long life with healthy lifestyle, but also look beautiful as you grow old. I do hope you have learned quite a few lessons as I have from this book. And I do hope uh, that you will read the book yourself uh, and learn all this lesson. One more quick thing, towards the end of the book, author has done a beautiful thing that he has given different exercise pattern that you can follow. So there are uh, exercises given which you can inculcate in a day-to-day -day life and can live a very healthy lifestyle. Beyond that, uh, there are uh, yogic ashram. I know for sure in India, I'm sure they are in the US as well, where you can go and practice pranaya or way of breathing, which can be under instructor to help you to uh, do breathing in a manner that you want to and can learn from there and can bring it back to your life or in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you again for listening and I do hope to see you in my next video. Take care and please leave your comments and your thoughts in the comment box. Thank you. Take care now. Bye.